Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we talked about the sort and sweep algorithm for collision detection, and we began our way on implementing it. We created the basic outline, and we handled removing all the straggling entities before we began. Today, we're going to take on the bulk of the algorithm. Let's get to it. Now, if you followed the last video, you might think, oh, we're going to start by implementing highest variance axis. But we're not. Actually, we're going to take care of the sorting first. So, the way this works, pretty straightforward in principle, but it gets a little tricky, as you'll see. We're going to use std sort, straightforward enough. We're going to sort from entities.begin to entities.end. And we're also going to pass in a custom compare function. But this is where it gets a little tricky, because this custom compare needs to know, well, what axis are we comparing on? So we're going to create a functor for that. And in case you've never seen it before, here's how a functor works in C++. You create a class or a struct, doesn't matter. I'm going to make mine a struct. And we need to make, create a name for it. So I'm just going to call it interaction world compare, because it's a comparison function we're using for the interaction world. We can put whatever data we need in it, such as a uint32 for the axis. I'm going to just start off by saying the axis is 0. And then we need the function, so it's going to be a bool operator. And see, I'm overloading this operator. So ideally, I could create an instance of this called interaction world compare, I don't know, Joe. And then I can call Joe like it's a function, even though it's a class. So it's kind of cool like that. But yeah, so this is going to take and a few parameters, namely it's going to take in the entity handle A and entity handle B. Oh, and I almost forgot, this is also going to need a reference to the ECS. Because yeah, we're going to need to know about that. So, yeah. I, with that, I also believe I'll need to create a constructor for this to make that work, so that's the data. The constructor takes in an ECS reference, ECS in, a uint32 axis in, sure. I mean, why not at this point? And we're going to start off with axis, sorry, well, yeah, axis equals axis n, and ECS equals, oops, I forgot the closing parentheses, ECS is ECSN. There we go, nothing mind-blowing there, and I don't need the default parameter anymore. So awesome, we now have a constructor, and the operator itself, this is going to be our compare function. Right now, I'm just going to do the naive way of A is less than B, so not correctly implemented. I'm just going to try and get this working, by which I mean compiling first. So this is our functor. We're going to have one of these functors in our class. I'm going to call it compare AABB, sure. And this is what we're going to take in as our parameter here. One trick to this, though, we do now need to initialize this in our constructor, so compare AABB that's going to take in ECS in as the ECS, and for the axis, it can just be axis zero. Don't particularly care. So now we can delete our temporary code here. Now I can hit back, and if all went according to plan, I should be able to correctly build and run, but I can't because I forgot to include algorithm at the top because that's what includes sort. So with that, now we should be able to build, but we can't because I forgot a semicolon at the end of the declaration of our functor. So now we should be able to build, and now it actually works. There we go. Okay. We do have a warning because of our temporary code, but that's okay. That's not a terribly big issue. So now the question comes, how do we implement our interaction world compare? Overall, this should be pretty simple. It, the trick is retrieving the collider component from the ECS. So we're going to say ECS, get component, collider component. There you go. Simple as that. We just need to test an A because we want the collider component of, well, entity A. And what we're going to do is we're going to get min extents because we're sorting based on, well, the minimum extents. And we want to do sub whatever the axis is. This is our way of getting the float. So float a min is this. And we'll go do the exact same thing for b. So b min is the same thing except for b. And once we have that, it's very simple. We just compare a min to b min. There you go. That's all we do. It's a little cramped here, but 
I make it full screen, you get a better picture of what the code looks like. Pretty straightforward. We get the component for entity A, get the min extents of the, at that axis. Same thing for entity B. Whichever has the least min extents, there you go. All right. So that appears to be all the sorting taken care of. Now you might think, all right, now we should find the highest variance axis. I'm actually going to get rid of this. And you might wonder, well, Benny, what's up with that? The thing is, I realized we can actually find the highest variance axis in the process of finding all the intersections. So there's no need to do a separate pass. So what I'm going to do is now we have sorting done. I'm going to go through everything and we're going to start looking at doing the intersection testing. So first of all, we're going to have to go through the list. So I'm going to start with size t i equals zero, i is less than entities dot size i plus plus. There you go. We're going through the list. Somewhere down here, we're going to find intersections for this entity. But we're not going to focus on that yet. What we're going to focus on right now is we're going to focus on how we can do the highest variance axis in the process of this. So like we did up here, we're going to need the collider AABB. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say AABB, sure, AABB, it's going to be the same thing, except we don't need to get many extents. We just need the collider itself, which, by the way, I just realized I did this slightly wrong. We need to get the AABB dot get min extents. So, yeah, that's kind of important. And that's all we care about here. So, I'm it's okay that we're not, you know, saving the collider component for anything. That's totally fine. A will need to be changed to entities sub i. And there. So, this gets us the AABB for every single one of them. As far as the variance goes, we're going to need a few variables to keep track of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to say vector 3f, I'm going to call it center sum, and then center sum squared, or ever center squared sum. It's more accurate. Because you may know there's an equation to calculate variance based on the sum of everything you're trying to take the variance of and the sum of the squares of everything you're trying to get the variance of. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I want the center. I want the variance of the centers. It's a reasonable point to take the variance of, so that's what I'm going to do. AABB dot get center. So what I would do is first off, I start with this equal to filled with zeros. That's what I want this starting off at, just nothing. And I'll, every, every time through, center sum plus equals center. Perfectly reasonable. Center square sum plus equals center time center. And for those of you who are mathematically pedantic, you might notice, uh, wait a minute, there's no mathematically defined operator for a vector multiplied by another vector. And that's because in my code, I've just defined it as a component-wise multiplication, because in practice, that's a really useful, and you aren't always using vectors in their strict mathematical definition, really as evidenced here. So there's that. And what we can do is we can just sum up everything all the way through. And, yeah, notice how easy this is. Then at the end, what we can do is say center sum divided equals entities dot size. And same thing for center square sum. So this gets us the average center and the average center squared. And then vector 3f variance, yeah, is center squared sum minus the center sum, sorry, times center sum. And that is the definition of variance, the, so, the mean of squares minus the square of means, or however the mnemonic goes. I don't really think in terms of mnemonics, but there's some mnemonic like that you may have learned. Yeah, this is great. So once we have the variance, what we can do is we just find whichever has the high ends. So float max var equals variance sub zero. If variance sub one is greater than max var, then 
max var equals variance sub 1. And we can do the same check for variance of 2. We could do it in a loop, but I think that's probably more complicated than just doing the check twice. So yeah, it's one of those edge cases because there's only three of them. But yeah, now we know which axis has... Actually, we don't because I didn't keep track of it. Whoops. <laughs> so max var axis starts off equal to zero. If in this case, max variance axis is one. And in this case, max variance axis equals two. So lastly, all we have to do is go to our compare AABB and set, I believe it, it's, yeah, axis, straight up axis equals max var axis. So I'll just go ahead and add a comment here. Set max variance axis. The only drawback to doing it like this is, yeah, the variance calculation will lag by one update. So that's kind of, you know, not ideal. But really, it's close enough. You're not going to expect the variance to just dramatically change from frame to frame. So this should be plenty fine. All right. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. Now we're going to find all the intersections for this entity. So size tj equals i minus 1. We're going to start at whatever the next entity is, and we're just going to go on to see what this entity is intersecting with. Now, by default, we're going to go through all the way to the end of the array, which might leave you wondering, hang on a second, Benny. Didn't we just do this whole nonsense of sorting specifically so we could avoid having to go through the entire array for every single entity? We did. That's why we're going to have an early out condition. So the early out condition is pretty straightforward. If, well, first of all, actually, before we even do that, we're gonna I'm gonna create an AABB called other AABB. Sure. We're gonna get the, a component for entities sub J. Yeah, just like that. That's should be correct. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the early out check. If AABB dot get min extents sorry, get max extents, excuse me. Wrong one. <laughs> and we want this sub so compare AABB dot axis. Whatever is it is max extent on the compare axis is. Here's the thing. If other dot AABB dot get min extents on this axis, just copy and paste because I am lazy. Yes. Get min extents on this axis. If this is greater than the max extents on that axis, then this can't possibly be intersecting it. And not only can this not possibly be intersecting this entity, but nothing beyond this could possibly be intersecting this entity. So what can we do? We can just move right along. We don't need to mess around with this anymore. So that's exactly what we're going to do. In this case, we're just going to break out of this level of the loop because at this point, we know, yeah, we're not in range anymore. That's our early out condition. And because we've sorted it, this is a safe check to do, and it should be triggered reasonably often. So it should eliminate a good number of these tests for us. And once we've established, okay, this is at least potentially intersecting this other AABB, that's when you do the test. If AABB dot intersects, I did I call it that? I'm pretty sure I called it that, but I'm going to just go ahead and double check really quick. First of all, actually, make sure you have both yeah, closing parentheses. So now, at long last, we've determined these two AABBs are intersecting. So now we need to do entities i interact with entities sub j, and vice versa. If these match any of our rules for interaction, then if rules say so, then entities i interacts with entities j. There you go. But that's just a comment. That's not going to do the code. We have the system to determine what's overlapping. We essentially have collision detection. We can detect two entities are overlapping, and they should interact in some way. 
What we don't have is this nice list of interactions. How do we implement the actual interaction system? How do we implement the rules that say these things should be interacting? Make them interact. Find out next time. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. And I will see you all in the next video. And don't forget, there is an awesome Benny Discord you can join. And if you want early access to videos, you can become a patron on Patreon. Very special thank you to the patrons listed in the video description for being awesome and making these videos possible. Thank you all, and I will see you in the next video.